Electronic transmitters use either a 4 to 20 or 10 to 50 milliampere output signal. The transmitter may measure flow, level, pressure, temperature, or other variables, but the transmitted signal is in milliamperes. For calibration purposes, we must convert these process input signals to the correct milliamp output signal. The receiving instruments for a 0 to 200 PSIG transmitter will have scales or charts marked 0 to 200 PSIG. The recorder may read 100 PSIG, but the transmitted signal is milliamperes. Our objective is to determine the correct milliamp output for a given process input. Our two transmitter output ranges give two fixed reference points for any input range. For the 4 to 20 milliamp output, 4 milliamps represents the low end of the input range and 20 milliamps represents the high end. Similarly, for the 10 to 50 output signal, 10 milliamperes represents the low end of the input range and 50 milliamps represents the high end. For a 0 to 200 pound pressure transmitter, we have these known calibration points for the two output ranges. Consider if the range of the transmitter is 500 to 700 PSIG instead of 0 to 200 PSIG. The range is different, but the span is still 200 PSIG. What is the correct milliamp output for 500 and 700 PSIG for both the 4 to 20 and 10 to 50 milliamp outputs? At 500 PSI input, the low end of the range, the output should be 4 or 10 milliamps, depending on the output range selected. At 700 pounds, the output would be either 20 or 50 milliamps. It makes no difference whether the input range happens to be 0 to 200 PSIG, 0 to 32 inches level, or 0 to 100 inches of water. The low and high end of the range outputs in milliamps are set by the milliamp output range of the specific transmitter. Why did the output ranges not start at 0 milliamps instead of 4 or 10 milliamps? The reason is to get a live zero. In this way, if the transmitter output is too low for the low end of the range, the receivers will read below zero. Now work exercise number one in your workbook. The inputs for the transmitters given in exercise one were either the high or the low end of a given range. The answers are the high or low ends of the respective milliamp output range. 
For full calibration, we must calculate outputs between the range extremes. A five-point calibration is sufficient. Assume that our transmitter has a 4 to 20 milliamp output range. What is the correct output for 25% span? It is 8 milliamps. The output span for the range 4 to 20 milliamps is 16 milliamps. The percent of span output versus the percent of span input to the transmitter is linear. 50% span input should give 50% of span output. For an example, we shall select a 0 to 200 PSIG pressure transmitter having a 4 to 20 milliamp output and an input pressure of 50 PSIG. What should the output read in milliamps? The input span is 200 PSIG. 50 pounds is one-fourth of the input span. The output span is 16 milliamps. Remember the percent output to percent input is a linear relation. Therefore, the output should change one-fourth of 16 or 4 milliamps. We had a starting milliampere reading of 4. This must always be added to the percent of span change in milliamps. 8 milliamperes is the correct output for the 50 PSI input. By the same reasoning, the correct readout for 100 PSI input to the 0 to 200 PSI G transmitter is 12 milliamps. Here is a problem for you to work. Your answer should be 16 milliamps. This is the completed five-point calibration. When calculating transmitter outputs, it is necessary to think in terms of percent span change, and not to get confused with range. All of these examples have a span of 200. None of the ranges are the same. Take the 125 to 325 PSIG range, for example. Assume an input of 175 PSIG to a 4 to 20 milliamp transmitter. What is the correct output? The span is 200 PSIG. An input of 175 PSIG is 25% of the input span. 25% of the 16 milliamp output span is 4 milliamps. Add this to the 4 milliamp starting current and we have 8 milliamps as the answer.
Now take the same conditions and calculate the output for 275 PSIG input. Two hundred seventy five PSIG input is seventy five percent of the input span. The output is sixteen milliamperes. We have proved that the transmitter is concerned with percent span and not range. These four different transmitter ranges have the same 200 PSIG span. Note that the 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100 percent of span inputs have the same milliamp output for each range. For any 4 to 20 milliamp output transmitter having linear inputs, the output can be calculated from this formula. The output in milliamps equals the input minus the low end of the range divided by the span. Times 16 plus 4. Can you give a definition to this expression? It is simply the percent of total span represented by a given input. We will use the formula to calculate the milliamp output for the 650 PSIG input. By substituting in the formula, We have 14 milliamps as the answer. The type of measurement units do not affect the method of calculation. Here we have inches of water. The correct output for 28 inches input is 18 milliamperes. Now work exercise number two in your workbook. These are the correct answers. Did anyone have trouble with the last one? The minus 10 to 40 PSIG range with 2.5 PSI input. The span for the range minus 10 to 40 is 50. The 2.5 minus a minus 10 gives a plus 12.5. The answer is 8 milliamperes.
So far, we have primarily discussed the 4 to 20 milliamp transmitter. Where the output span is 16 milliamps for the 4 to 20, it is 40 milliamps for the 10 to 50 milliamp output range. We can add one more line to a previous slide and compare the 10 to 50 output to the 4 to 20 milliamp one. The only difference in the two formulas is shown here. For an example, we shall calculate the milliamp output for a 600 to 800 PSIG range transmitter having a 630 PSIG input. The answer is 16 milliamperes. We will work a few problems for the 10 to 50 milliamp transmitters. Turn to exercise number three and work these problems. These are the answers for exercise three. In summary, this expression explains the mechanics of calculating the output for either the 4 to 20 or 10 to 50 milliamp range. Further, for any transmitter, there are three outputs we should know using only mental calculations. The 0 and 100% span outputs are obvious. For the mid-span output, divide the output span by 2 and add the base or starting current. When calibrating flow transmitters, it is often necessary to work with square root scales one must calculate the percent of input span that is represented by a given reading on the square root scale. Scale A represents a 0 to 100 linear scale. Scale B is a 0 to 10 square root scale. Notice that when a number on the square root scale is squared, it is the same as the number on the direct scale immediately above. To convert a reading on a square root chart to percent of span input, it is only necessary to square the reading and add percent. Some manufacturers make it easy. These dots represent 25, 50, and 75 percent span. A 10 to 50 milliamp transmitter reads 8 on a square root scale. What is the correct milliamp output? The output should be 35.6 milliamps. Now calculate the correct output for the same reading of 8 on a 4 to 20 milliamp transmitter. <laughs> 
answer is 14.24 milliamperes. Note that for a given reading on a square root scale, the output is the same irregardless of the range. To give the reading of 5 on the square root scale, the input to each transmitter is different. However, in each case, the reading of 5 represents 25% of the input span. This has been a brief review of flow scales we have studied in other modules. This completes the presentation for segment 2.22.2 with one exception. Complete the work in exercise 4.